Hello and welcome to the first age-friendly live event of 2021. Today, we're going to learn what is behind the Seattle Public Library's great success. It's foundation from the CEO, Jana Ward. By the way, if we haven't already met, my name is Lenny Orlov. I host and produce these bi-weekly virtual programs for Seattle Human Services. If you or your friends ever miss a live stream, you can find the recording on our YouTube channel. It's called Aging King County in about a week. But if you click or tap subscribe, you will know exactly when that happens. So today's show is called Age Friendly Seattle Coffee Hour. Actually, it's the Age Friendly Seattle Civic Coffee Hour. And as the name and my shirt suggest, these are all about the coffee and civic engagement for older folks in Seattle. And we do these on the third Thursday of every month. We invite government decision makers into this virtual studio to talk about their work and to answer your questions. Presentations are closed captioned, and that is in English and six other languages. I'll list them for you. Arabic, Chinese, Korean, Russian, Spanish, and Vietnamese. Go ahead, uh, turn those on, uh, and you can do that by clicking the CC underneath and then the gear right next to it. Um, spoken interpretation, we know that's you know industry standard, but it's not currently available for these webinars, but we're always looking to improve uh, and welcome any feedback you may have. And you can leave that in the live event Q&A or in the comments section on YouTube. The other show that we are producing with the support from the library is called Close to Home, Stories of Health, Tech and Resilience. This one is on the first Thursday of the month. The coffee hour was on the third and this one is on the first. Unlike the coffee hour uh, that's been around over a decade, Close to Home started just this past April 2020, and it's our response to the COVID-19 pandemic. It also isn't limited to speakers with ties to local government. Anyone that has a compelling message for Seattle's older adults could get an invitation. I hope you will join us on February 4th to meet Omari Salisbury. He's with Converge Media, Seattle's central area independent media outlet. And it's happening at the same time and in the same virtual place, bit.ly forward slash H friendly live. We'll put a link in the description and in the live Q and A. And there are no spaces, but all words are capitalized. Bit.ly forward slash H friendly live. And go ahead and bookmark that virtual event hub, it, not just for these bi-monthly live events, but to watch previous recordings and learn about what's coming up. At Age Friendly Seattle, we lead with connection, inclusion, and access. So folks without an internet connection can still tune in. And you can do that from any phone. And, and I see some of you are doing that today, which is really awesome. The number is, for uh, future reference, is 206-686-8357. And then they'll ask you to enter a conference ID and that is 224-689-164. Currently, this way of accessing our age-friendly live events is available only with English audio. But again, we're hoping to change that later in 2021. But regardless of how you are joining us, today for the coffee hour. I'd like to welcome you to the event on behalf of Seattle Human Services Department. The coffee hour is where you make the coffee, at least in this virtual format, and we make the connections. 
so please go ahead and get your questions, comments, suggestions, get all that ready because once our presenters are finished, we'll go right into the Q&A. We'll check in on the phones first, but uh, anything that you type in to the Q&A, our moderators, Michael Taylor Judd and Justin England will collect. And then they will let the presenters know you will likely get to see one or both of them uh, uh, on uh, on video. And if you're joining us on the phone, we do ask that you hold your questions until we unmute your line. And if your question is related to aging or disability, but is beyond the scope of this presentation, please call Community Living Connections. And that number is 1-844-348-5464. It's a local network of agencies that can provide resources, services for things such as food, meals, and even information on vaccinations. That is a very important topic right now. The phone call is free and the number again is 844-348-5464. Uh, you may also visit them on the web at communitylivingconnections.org. All one word, capitalization, doesn't matter. And you'll see a list of uh, all the participating organizations um, in this network and find out what their full range of services is. Again, communitylivingconnections.org. Before turning it over to our friends from the Seattle Public Library and the Foundation, I'd like to talk specifically about COVID-19 vaccinations in King County. In the past, we have directed you to the vaccination, um, or rather to the general statewide coronavirus.wa.gov website. And it, you know, it does have uh, a lot of uh, very useful information uh, and it includes a couple of hotlines. One of them is the Washington Department of Health Assistance hotline. That's 1-800-525-0127 and the hours are 6 to 10 p.m. 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday and Sunday and holidays. The other important hotline is called Washington Listens. It, it lets you talk to somebody just about anything related to stress with COVID-19 and that number is 1-833-681-0211. And the hours there are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and weekends from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Again, the number for Washington listens, 1-833-681-0211. You know, it's a, it's a great statewide website, but specifically for vaccine info, we want to recommend using a King County resource, which I'm going to bring up on the screen right now. It's a longer URL. So, um, you know, we will post it in the, in the Q and A and in the description, but for, uh, for now, let's, let's go ahead and walk through it together. And actually, why don't we uh, look at how you can get to it right from the sort of the main King County website. So if you click on, if you just go to kingcounty.gov, which is the main site for King County. The first thing that comes up on the screen is these COVID-19 resources. So if you click on the last one that's visible here, and it just says help slow the spread of COVID-19 in King County. If you click there, it'll bring you to this uh, information on coronavirus um, disease, COVID-19. And then in this first box called expanded vaccination for older adults, there is a link called how to get vaccinated. And that gets you to the site that I would like to talk with you about that our moderators uh, are, are posting in the chat. So, so this, so this site is called, or this page of the KingCounty.gov site is called Getting Vaccinated in King County. 
And here, it, and this is the reason uh, we recommend that you check this particular website is because it's specific to what phase King County is in. And currently it's in the states phase 1A and phase 1B tier 1 for vaccine distribution. Um, and how do you know what phase you are? Well, there is an interactive thing they set up. And so if you scroll down just a little bit, there's these different sections. And if you click the plus next to each section, you can see more information. The first section is how, who can get vaccine right now. And if you click that, it tells you uh, who is eligible and, and ages, etc. If you click the second section, which is how to get vaccinated, and you click that plus sign there, there is a phase finder that's linked there in the second paragraph. It's the words phase and finder. So if you click that, it'll redirect you to a, a totally different page. And, you know, in some cases it didn't come up because I think a lot of folks are using it right now. Uh, but it uh, looks like it did load for us here. Uh, it still goes to Washington State Department of Health. Um, and then it there this one, unlike the rest of the websites, both at the state and the county level, which are available in dozens of languages, this particular tool is available in English and Spanish. Um, so when you click start, it, it gives you a disclaimer and it asks you to provide, you know, um, it talks about how this is for people over 16 and it also uh, asks you to provide you know truthful information but then after that uh, it'll ask you for the zip code and then you just go through the steps and find out if you're eligible uh, and this is where you would also find out the location where you can get vaccinated if you are in fact eligible so again uh, this site you can get to by going to kingcounty.gov, uh, then clicking on COVID-19, and then how to get vaccinated. All right, well, thank you for uh, checking it out with us together today. Um, uh, we hope that you found it useful. We are gonna keep coming back to this on every program so that you know, as information changes and hopefully more and more people will become eligible for vaccines, that's, that's, what, uh, that's what they're aiming for, uh, uh, from what I understand. Uh, you know, as, as that happens, we will certainly keep you up to date uh, and uh, we'll, we'll let you know what's uh, what, what's happening. And we hope that you'll share it with folks in your life uh, for sure. So today though, it's all about hashtag reading with us and reading with the libraries and all the other, you know, wonderful things we've come to expect from our, you know, our local library system. In uh, just a few minutes, you'll hear from the Seattle Public Library Foundation's Chief Executive Officer, Jana Ward. But to introduce Jana and to give a brief update on the library's road to reopening, please welcome SPL's special agent in charge of age friendliness, Nancy Sloat. Uh, I'm going to uh, bring uh, Nancy up on the screen and I'll actually uh, share what her uh, real title is, which is Older Adults Program Manager. And, you know, I've, I've really appreciated working with you, Nancy, over the past year. Um, and folks out there, uh, please, again, go ahead and leave a comment for Nancy or Jana right now uh, if you're online and on the phone. Just have it ready for when uh, Jana, uh, when uh, Nancy and Jana are, are finished presenting, so that we can go ahead and pass those questions along to them. So, Nancy, happy 2021. Please remember to unmute your microphone and you'll be live on the Civic Coffee Hour. Uh, 
thank you so much, Lenny, and good morning, everyone. Um, I just uh, wanted to uh, say how much I have appreciated um, our partnership with Seattle Human Services and H Friendly Seattle and with Lenny and the staff which helped produce these programs. Um, we, it is so important right now that older adults get the information that they need that can empower them to live well. And I'm delighted that the library can uh, participate with and partner with um, the uh, age-friendly folks. So, um, I'm sure everybody is familiar with the uh, library's road to reopening. I just wanted to highlight some of the services that we have to make sure that you know about them. Down on that low, lower right picture, that's the Central Library. That's the library where I pick up my materials, um, and it's actually very easy to do so. Um, could you have the next slide? So uh, we have a number of branches that offer what we call curbside pickup. Once you put a hold on materials, books, or DVDs, um, and uh, you get a notice that they've come in, then you can go to any one of these branches on the hours that are up there um, to pick up your materials. Just the other day, literally on Tuesday, we expanded our curbside service, so there are even more libraries than, and branches that um, have curbside now, um, including, I'm sure people in Magnolia will be happy, and also up at Northgate, and we've extended um, some of the days where you can pick up materials. So please go to spl.org slash curbside to get the newest information. And one thing that I think um, people may not know is that if, if it's difficult at all to get out of your car to, um, to literally go to the entrance of the branch, um, you can always call the branch and ask them, tell them that you need somebody to bring the materials to you, and they will check out your books and bring them to your car. So please avail yourself of that. Um, could I have the next slide? And another new new service that we have is called curbside printing, um, where um, you can send a print job um, from your phone or from your computer or from your tablet um, to a special um, web address, um, and it's being sent wirelessly. And you can do uh, we will print ten free black and white pages for you for you to come and pick up. Um, at a branch. Um, so honestly, um, you know, this is all like magic for me and I need to look up the exact address to send my print job for the wireless printing. Um, but uh, definitely contact the library if you have questions about it. It's also up on our webpage. And um, this is uh, actually, um, I'm, I'm happy that I can um, say thank you in person to Jana. And this is something um, that the SPL Library Foundation has, um, has uh, funded for us. So it's great. Could I have the next slide? So we have lots of ways that you can get a hold of the library. Phone, I always say go to the phone. It's, it's sometimes the easiest way to get a hold of the library. You can get all kinds of questions answered about wireless, about putting holds on materials. We call it quick information. Um, if you prefer to email or do live chatting with library staff, you can, of course, do that as well. Uh, go to the next slide. Of course, um, our collections, our, our print collections have always been wonderful, but especially during the pandemic, we have really up our, we call them our digital collections, especially our ebooks and our e audiobooks and I can tell you, for me, during the pandemic, I have relied so heavily on um, our digital collection. Again, our quick information telephone staff can help you um, do this for the first time, get, get the right apps that you need, all that kind of thing, and kind of walk you through it. Um, once you do it a couple of times, it becomes very easy. And we have 
streaming music services. We have actually digital magazines, which are just like the facsimile, the real magazines that you turn the pages, all kinds of um, news and cooking and sports, um, politics, all kinds of general magazines. Uh, could, could you go to the next slide? And I know, I just wanted to highlight, um, we have three different, um, what we call streaming services, um, to access movies. Um, and they all have a little different of focus. Um, access video, looks at documentaries, lots, hoopla, things like TV shows. And Canopy has lots of great international films as well. You can stream these to your phone or to your tablet. And if you have a smart TV, you can stream it to your TV screen. So you get that nice big sense of watching a movie. Uh, next, next slide, please. And I just wanted to make sure that you, you knew that once you have a library card, um, it's all free for you. And if you do not have a library card, we know that you can actually go into a branch to get a library card. You can do it online, and we can, if you have a mobile phone, we can get you instant access to our ebook collection. And then in just a couple of days later, we can get you full access to the rest of the collection. So we wanted to make that as easy as we could for people and make sure that everybody could have access to our resources. Uh, next slide. For those of you who are tired of computers and virtual things, or if you know people who um, don't have access, we do have something called the Seattle Public Library Lit Line, and these are stories by phone. You can see the, the phone number up there, 386-4656, and library staff has been, have been reading fiction and nonfiction short pieces under five minutes. They're both in English and Spanish, and they are regularly changed. And I'm one of the readers, and I had a great time reading a selection from the Seattle Times back in the 19th century. So it's a lot of fun um, if you just need to hear a voice um, and pick up the phone. Uh, can I have the next slide? Ah, here's my Bollywood dance. Um, we have been doing some wonderful programs over the um, pandemic, and uh, Silver Kite is a local community arts organization that works with older adults, and we have offered over 100 programs since April. We're scheduling more. The most popular program has been Bollywood Dance, and that has been coming up. Uh, we'll have several more of those, so check our website for those programs. You do need to register. And uh, next one. One of the services that I love the most about the library is something called Your Next Five Books. Of course, I am a librarian. I do like reading. And it's just um, you can write in, you email in and fill out a form, and you tell the librarian what you're interested in reading. Um, let's say you just feel like you're in a rut and you just need some new authors. And you let them know uh, a few authors that you like and what you're interested in, and you will get a personalized list back of five books or DVDs that are in the collection that fit that criteria. And I have to tell you, I use it sometimes. My family uses it. And it's pretty wonderful. It kind of stretches you sometimes and allows you to find new, new authors. So I highly recommend that service. And I think the final slide coming up. Um, this is uh, the special web pages on uh, the Big SPL uh, website, um, which is specifically devoted to older adults. And we are focusing on five areas that you can see listed, um, and aging in place, creative aging, dementia-friendly libraries, employment and entrepreneurship, and healthy aging. So check back at our next chapter site regularly. Um, to find out our services and programs. And finally, the last slide is just my contact information at the library. And please, um, if you have suggestions or questions um, ever about our programs, uh, please get in touch. I would love to talk with you. So 
Thank you very much, everyone. And I'm going to turn it back to Lenny. All right, thank you so much, Nancy. Uh, I, I know there, these are connected presentations, so without uh, further ado, I am going to now turn it over to Jana. Jana, uh, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, if you click the microphone icon, you'll be live on the Civic Coffee Hour. Fabulous. Thank you, Lenny and Nancy. I'm so proud of the work that you're doing, and this is just a perfect example of the type of thing that the Seattle Public Library Foundation does, thanks to donors. And so um, everything special at the library, I'd like to say, has some private support behind it. And uh, donors do so much to help Seattle Public Library. Uh, let's look to the next slide, and I want to tell you a little bit about myself, and then I'll, I'll talk more about the foundation. I don't know how many of you might remember or have had one of these in your past, uh, but I grew up in uh, middle of Montana, middle of nowhere, and this was my local Carnegie. And this was where I would spend time before activities, the nights I didn't ride the bus home, and libraries just got in my skin, my soul from those early days and have been with me for a long time. There came a point uh, in my professional career, once I had living here in Seattle, my children were young and I'd been working in the dot-com marketing arena and uh, I was kind of done with that. And so I was gonna be home with my kids and one child liked the Broadview branch and the other liked the Greenwood branch. And uh, there was this job posting in the foyer. That's how they used to do it. And it was this job that was meant for me. And so I joined the Library Foundation. I'm in my 20th year. And in that time, I've seen our library transition through so many different things. And the foundation has really evolved. And I have to also say that the, the industry or the sector of library support network around foundations and friends of the library have also evolved. And so I'm proud to say that Seattle Public Library Foundation, just like our library, really are leaders in this area, whether it's the Library Giving Day that we are the founders of or the um, International Public Library Fundraising Conference. Those are two things that we really have created that help our libraries no matter where they're at. So next slide. I want to give you a little context. Some of you may remember those days back in the 70s, and I wasn't here yet, but this famous sign um, really pointed to a time in our, in our area, in our region, but in our country where uh, through the 70s, there was a lot of changes to what uh, public government could afford. And in the local level, there were a lot of uh, expenses and, and programs that were pushed down into the into the city to pick up the expense for. And what that does is on a system like our library, who is one of five charter departments, it really put the pressure on the library as the city picked up other expenses. And I think that that was happening all across the country because this concept around library foundations really started to be born then. And so if you want to go to the next one, Lenny. So this is the person. Uh, in 1980, Virginia Burnside was on the, the library board and she and her other library directors, or trustees you could call them, just recognized the challenge that the library is facing with their budget. And so she, along with her group, actually formed the Seattle Public Library Foundation. And, you know, man, she had, she had an imprint or an impact on the library, but she certainly did on the, the foundation. So that was 1980. And Lenny, if you want to go to the next slide. And during those early years, the foundation was a pretty quiet, sleepy little uh, uh, organization. They were friends raising and they did a few things. But in the late 80s, there was a really moment in time where the library's bookmobile, which was called Ramona, I didn't know that, but in the olden days, they used to uh, name these bookmobiles. So here's Ramona, she got her 20 year pin, uh, but that was when basically she was no longer functional. And so Ramona ended up sitting in state in front of Central Library with her hood up. And uh, either the PI or the Times, you know, spoke to this really somber, open hood ceremony that happened. 
Now, what that really was for the Library Foundation, that was really the beginning of the first meaty project that was really important to the library. And so the library committed to really doing a, um, let's, let's get this Library Foundation off the ground. And they actually hired their first executive director and really started to do the fundraising. If you wanna to go to the next slide, so Ramona helped get things going, but the real game changer came um, when Seattle and our, our US citizens um, voted to pass the largest bond measure ever passed for libraries in the country. And it was $198 million to rebuild our library system. It was a new central, everything got some level of, of uh, renovation and we ended up with five new libraries in the process. And so for the foundation, we knew going into that uh, bond measure that the, the project was short about $40 million. And up until that point, the foundation had never raised more than maybe a million dollars. And the board at that time and leadership said, we can do this. And they committed to raising $40 million that allowed for collections for every branch, to help with enhancements to libraries. And it began what is known as an endowment, which was our way of funding um, and starting to create an ongoing sustainable funding stream. And so the end of the campaign, or this campaign ran from 98 through 2008. And that's uh, the time of when libraries were getting renovated and Central Library happened to open in 2004. And that's really, of course, uh, were so, the heart of our system. But that whole campaign and all of that work really did change um, the work of the foundation. In the end, $83 million was raised. And in fact, much of that work and the donors and uh, endowment funding raised really did transform our organization into something that looks very different today than it did before. And if you wanna go ahead to the next slide, I wanted just to, to shift gears a little bit. You know, the foundation is a nonprofit partner to the library, and we provide a way for people who value libraries to contribute both financially or to advocate. And when I say advocate, that's really about speaking up for the library, whether it's to your elected officials or in your neighborhood or whatever it is to really talk about the library if you value it. And we also want to enhance its impact and to ensure its long-term vitality. And if you want to go to the next one, this first part was the who, but really what we do comes in, in these three different, I'll call it the three legs of the stool. So first off, we cultivate, meaning we bring funding, resources, partnership to the library to really help cultivate relationships with the community at large. We invest in the library to enrich uh, lives of everyone and especially to have greater social impact on our community. And it's private donations that really empower the library for creative solutions and different things. So the work that Nancy is doing is a perfect example of a three-year commitment to get a new program off the ground and for the library to really determine and figure out where it best can serve the community and support, support the community. And I think the other thing is private support has always played a role in really trying to impact equity, getting the resources to the people who need it most. And probably the, the newest part of our work really does come around the advocacy side, because as the foundation has evolved and the library's needs have evolved, we really are a voice for the foundation and we defend it and we try to protect it and we want to ensure that it's valued and appreciated and taken care of for the long term. Now I'll pause just a second to say um, there are two supporting organizations that are involved in the library. The foundation is one and then we have the Friends of the Library who have been around since, in fact, they're, they're in their 80th year. They're, they're, we're sister organizations. We provide a lot of support to Friends, but if you think about it, Friends for a long time ran the book sale. They've raised money by selling things and through the operations of their work. And they're a membership organization and they definitely are out in the community on a grassroots side. 
on the foundation, we work in tandem with them. And so if somebody's wanting to make a gift for the library or to the library, the foundation then is the, the means to do that. And I know, you know, the 20 years I've been involved, that's always been like, now what? Who's what? Who's where? How do we do this? Uh, next slide. So this, I just want to give you a sense of scope and scale for the foundation. Uh, in 2020, almost 8,000 people gave almost or over 14,000 gifts for the library. And that allowed us to raise $5.4 million to the library. But the incredible piece of it is, is that 2.1 million of those dollars that came in last year came in as estate gifts. So these are folks who truly believe and value in the library and want to help support it. And they've made these incredible gifts through their estate planning and made the foundation the beneficiary so that we can in turn invest in the library. Unbelievable, unbelievable and quite amazing. And this is really so much of our stability and what we're able to do for the library through good times and dark times. So last year we granted $6.6 .6 million to the library. And in fact, our other side of the work is we did a lot of fall campaign work with um, the advocacy work with our city council because we knew the library already faced a couple cuts and we really wanted to be in there to protect the library's budget. And then the other thing is, in addition to all this, many of the folks who are part of the foundation actually have been involved in being part of a campaign that helped get the bond measure passed when the library supplemental budget um, or levy came on board. And if you remember back in the Great Recession, the library went through eight cuts in four years time and it was so damaging to the library. And so the first levy we helped pass in 2012. And then again, many of us volunteered to get this recent levy passed and Hallelujah, 70, between 76 and 77, depending on who you ask, percent of the community voted yes to support the library. And that is just a reflection of the deep uh, commitment and how the library means so much to our community. Next slide. So I, I, I want to shift another uh, moment again here and just say libraries mean so much to people, but in such different ways. And in the years and over the time that I've been part of the library world, you know, I often use and think of more of the traditional services. These are the parts of the library, the collections, the reference. And what's really beautiful about our library system is no matter where you go in the city, it's it's equal. There are branches everywhere. There are amazing library staff and librarians and staff who are there to help you no matter where you go. But over time, there is this whole other side of library and it's really an unseen library that is one around taking library resource, often with private support behind it, to really serve different niches of the community. And so what Nancy is doing is one example and certainly the work that our library is doing to support some of our immigrants and refugees, people who have faced barriers to access, uh, communities who really are impacted by all of the things in our society that um, can perpetuate systemic racism or all the things that that cause us all to worry. And so I am so proud of the library's work as it's taken on its focus around equity and commitment to equity. And in fact, uh, Seattle Public Library has like the Academy Award winner uh, best picture equivalent uh, because it was selected uh, Library of the Year from um, for this past year. So. Kudos to the library, it's an amazing thing. Why I bring all that up is to say, that's where the private and public partnership between the foundation and the library, and of course donors who make it possible, really comes together and leverages your public investment through your taxes into an amazing library system. And we truly do have an amazing library system. Next slide. So I want to share uh, four key reasons why people support the libraries. And you may feel this whether you're a donor, and if you are, I thank you. If you're an advocate and library lover, I thank you for that too. Because all of us who really do value the library see it as one where it is an essential public service that we just can't do without. 
It is fire. It is police. It is all the things that are just core to a healthy community and libraries are there as essential. Libraries also are so key in the, the idea around how libraries provide access to knowledge and technology for everyone is really a motivation for many, many donors. Another motivation is this idea around libraries enrich uh, the lives of everyone, regardless of who you are and what your circumstance is. And then the fourth big area is really oh, incredibly pertinent right now, that this idea and this value around our democracy and that information and knowledge really does help keep a democracy vibrant and healthy. And our library and a library in any city or any community really is key to that. Now, next slide. So if those things are motivating to you, um, there's lots of different ways then that the foundation is helping. And I want to talk a little bit about the different ways we're investing in the library. And we call these the ease of library. Um, the first area is around equity, where which is really about technology and access and things like Wi-Fi hotspots that you can check out and the tech support that goes with it. Uh, there's all kinds of programming that is meant to reduce barriers. Even the bookmobile has a focus and priority based on audiences who, who have the greatest barriers. And of course, we even have community-based lending libraries now that are based out in the community where there are book deserts or where there are last, lasting or law, no access, easy access to materials. The other second big E is around education and Certainly, when it comes to children or lifelong learning, the library has been seen as just this incredible education resource. So right now, there are so many students across Seattle who are learning from home and are able to access homework help online. And in fact, every Seattle Public School student has access to a digital library card so that they can use the resources. Uh, on the enrichment side, uh, this is around access to books, the cultural programming, the age friendly program that Nancy leads. Um, when we can be together, the neighborhood hubs that our library represents. And so whether it's e-materials or you want to hear your favorite author or you want to use the special collections, all of those things are an enrichment side that allow the library to really thrive and be there for you. And then the last area again, that's really pertinent right now is libraries are part of the economic engine of our Seattle. If you think almost every food truck in Seattle has had some point in time where they've interacted with the library because our library to business service is there. Um, Your next job is a, is a resource that we're working on in partnership with the King County Library. And certainly we have a lot of people who are looking for resource and help as they search for work and, and really transition through this. So these are just four examples of, of things that the library is doing that we are proud to be able to support and fund so that the library is able to offer these services. Next slide. So no matter what your reason is or how you want or what you need in your life, the library offers something for everyone. And in my case, really my connection to the library began by taking my two kids, one to each branch, when I saw that job posting that led me to going to work for the library. But we all have different reasons and ways that um, the library speaks to us. So next slide. And I guess if, if you are one of those people um, and you care deeply about the library, there are many, many ways you can get involved. Uh, that idea around being an advocate for the library to, um, you know, defend your library if city council is cutting it or if there's an opportunity more, for more funding or if you really value e-materials or whatever it is, you can help advocate for the library and let your elected officials know. Um, many donors become page turners and a page turner is a donor who gives, say, $10 a month and are just they, they value the library, they want to contribute, and it's a really efficient, easy way to contribute. Another area we're focusing on right now is if, if equity and access is important to you, uh, this is such a focus of the library's work right now. And we have a special fundraising campaign going on, and in a very short order, we will be having a challenge match to help double the impact of gifts. And then lastly, as I mentioned earlier, the estate gifts 
are just incredibly valuable and important to us. And uh, many, many people in the community have joined our Legacy Society. And what that means is they've just let us know that uh, they intend to leave the Library Foundation in their estate plans. And we welcome them in and bring on some really fun, uh, lovely activities. So that's what our Legacy Society is about. Next slide. So again, I just want to invite you if you're interested in finding more, we are the support spl.org. I've included our email here. We're on Facebook, um, but the Library Foundation is really accessible. You get to us. We're a small but mighty team. We have a fabulous board and we work really closely with the library and they the library sets the vision and the, the strategy and we work then to figure out our best way to support it. And with that, I'll go to one last slide and then I think we can jump over to questions. Ah, there's a little group shot. Uh, this is a picture from one of our board meetings. Uh, just board members saying thanks after one of our really successful library giving days, which uh, is always certainly fun. So I just have to say thank you, Nancy. Thank you for helping get me or bringing me into the fold and Lenny, of course, for the work that you and your team are doing. I, I appreciate having the chance to to talk about my most favorite uh, organization and supporting organization. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Jonna. Um, we uh, looks like we have at least one question there uh, in the q a i'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, put everybody on mute right now uh, and i'm gonna encourage folks uh, out there uh, online to actually go ahead and uh, uh, type in your questions um, while we go to the phones and we're gonna do that right now because uh, uh, we want to check in with uh, people there first. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unmute that whole that whole entire uh, phone conference and then you know it it will allow uh, us to speak to folks. So at this time I believe the conference is open. If you had previously muted yourself, you may need to press star six to unmute yourself. Otherwise, you're live on the Civic Coffee Hour. And uh, what is your question or comment? When we do the recording, uh, we will play some music during this time. So, uh, but we will give you an opportunity to um, to ask your question or to uh, give a comment, and we can come back to you again if you would like uh, after we get through some of the online questions. So, thank you so much for joining us on the phone. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and uh, 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 close that line for the time being. Uh, and and then I'm going to turn it over to one of our moderators. Uh, most of the things you've seen in the live Q and A that was posted, sort of, you know, it, the words that you saw came through from Michael, whom I introduced earlier. So why don't we hear from Justin to see what was posted, so that one or both of our presenters could address that. Justin, uh, please remember to unmute uh, and uh, let's see what questions we have. All right, thanks Lenny. And thank you so much, Jonna and Nancy for your presentations on some of the library services. It's awesome to see the results of the absolutely essential work that our libraries are doing throughout the pandemic to provide support to the communities. Uh, we had one question come in about hotspot availability um, throughout the pandemic, and it looks like Nancy got to that in the Q&A, um, and she was able to provide some information about um, the availability of hotspots through SPL. Um, but I have one clarifying question while we wait for some additional questions to come in. Um, I'm, I'm curious if someone wants to make a donation to the SPL Foundation, is there a specific spot where they can do that? You bet, thank you for asking that. So at supportspl.org, 
we have a donate now button and it's easy to go there and make an online gift. But we're also old school. Uh, you can mail something to us. Uh, certain you can even call us and call in to say you'd like to make a donation. So um, the website's a good resource, but our main line is 206-386-4130. And again, uh, we have a fantastic but small but mighty team who uh, is very customer service oriented and will be there to help you in any way we can. All right. Thank you, Jonna. I am not seeing any additional questions in the chat at this time. Uh, the Q&A will remain open. Uh, so in case anybody else has anything that they'd like to send in, please get that in so that we can get those questions answered. Uh, but I will pass it back over to Lenny at this time. Excellent. Thank you, Justin, and thank you, Jonna. And um, thank you. Um, Nancy for answering that question. I'm wondering, uh, I don't see Nancy on the call anymore for some reason. So maybe I will uh, read out what the question, what the answer was for folks on the phone. Oh, there's Nancy. Nancy, would you like to go ahead and uh, uh, just for, for people who are, um, who are not um, in the live Q&A, uh, just so that they have the benefit of knowing what the answer is. I'm going to go ahead and switch it over to you. Great, thanks. Um, thanks, Lenny. So the question was uh, about hotspots and how to um, check them out of the library during COVID. So um, we have over 500 hotspots, um, which we circulate to the public. And uh, they circulate just like books do for three weeks. And so you go into our catalog and you place a hold um, on the hotspot. And then when they come in, um, you'll get a notice and you'll go to your curbside location where you um, said that you wanted to pick them up and uh, just pick them up. Um, and they'll be checked out for you. Um, they are a very popular service at the library. The last time I looked in, maybe it was uh, a couple of weeks ago, there were probably over a thousand holes um, on the 500 copies, 500 hotspots, but that's a lot of hotspots to be circulating. It doesn't take very long to get them. And here's a trick for you all. Once you check out a hotspot, you put a hold on, you've checked out the hotspot, then just, and, it, and you know you're going to want to have it for more time, go ahead and put a new hold on the hotspot, on the hotspot. So you'll be on the list again um, uh, to get a new one as soon as you need to return the old one. So we try to make that easy for you. And for finding the hotspots in the catalog, you know, for the first time, you go ahead and just call Quick Information at 386-4636, and they can walk you through how to find the hotspots in the catalog. Yeah. Wow, thank you for um, thank you for that additional tip, Nancy. That's that's really awesome. Um, uh, what an essential, you know, what an essential service, uh, especially in a time like right now. Um, and sounds like even with 500, uh, there's still demand out there for more. Um, and that's why, you know, supporting the, the foundation and through it, the library so, sounds so important because uh, folks, w w what we become aware of is that connectivity, the, their digital equity is is certainly not, you know, not across the board. And so uh, thank you so much to the foundation and to the library for providing that. Um, the, the contact information, I'm going to put it uh, back on the screen here for uh, so that folks can see it um, in terms of how to get in touch uh, and follow on social media um, the foundation and certainly you you know where to find the library uh, we have an update for you every every time we have a program well uh, since there are no uh, well actually it looks like there's one uh, new question 
Uh, actually, it's not a question. Uh, just a way to say a quick hello to Nancy and Jana and say this was an awesome presentation. And this person says, uh, oh, this is uh, Irene, Irene Stewart, uh, one of our colleagues. She says, I have to run to another meeting. Uh, and she she's uh, uh, bidding us adieu for now. And we are actually close to the end of our time. So again, uh, with uh, thanks to our presenters uh, and uh, to our moderators today for for getting us uh, from the beginning to the end of the program. We will, if, if folks think of additional questions, as I mentioned, we will have this posted on YouTube. And uh, you're welcome to leave a comment there once it's posted. So, uh, we, if you enjoyed today's program, we want you to save the date for our next coffee hour. And we talked about our next program, which is the Close to Home with Converge Media's Omari Salisbury. That's on February 4th. But on the 18th, so about a month from today, a little bit less, uh, we will have another coffee hour. And this one will be with Mariko Lockhart, uh, Director of Seattle Office for Civil Rights. And again, you know, you do the same thing you did today. You go to that main hub bit.ly forward slash H friendly live, no spaces, ca uh, capitalize each of the words. And um, actually why wait that whole month? Just uh, go there anytime, you know, tomorrow, uh, tell your friends. There is plenty of information there, previous episodes, upcoming events, that whole website talks about the Area Agency on Aging for Seattle and King County and the work that, let's say, the Advisory Council does. Uh, so, yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, when you watch the previous episodes, you can do that right through that page and you can click the subscribe button right from there. And that way you'll know when the next episode is up. Lastly, if Again, your question is beyond what we present in these presentations, but it is related to aging and disability. A reminder, you can call Community Living Connections at 1-844-348-5464, or you can visit them on the web at communitylivingconnections.org. And that's a um, network of organizations supported by Seattle and King County. So I'd like to thank you all uh, for joining us today and for your active participation. Um, we, we love it that some of you called in, some of you joined us online, um, and uh, we hope that you will continue coming back to these and uh, uh, tell your friends, and that way we can together keep making this city and this region a better place to grow up and grow old. Uh, this has uh, been an interesting uh, year already in 2021, uh, but uh, you know, yesterday was historic, and this and it was a tough act to follow. Uh, so thank you for turning out today once again. Happy New Year! Here's to connection, inclusivity, and access for all. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.